Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Recording this on Saturday morning, October 28th. Hope everybody had a good week. Let's jump into the markets and then we will look at all of our trades for the week. So starting with VIX. So we had a nice little spike in VIX on Monday morning, pushed above 23 and then immediately reversed as stocks started to climb, pushed down. Uh, stocks bounced on uh, Tuesday as well, another contraction in VIX. And then it popped back up. But what's interesting, if we look at the S&P, uh, the S&P continued to make new lows. So here's Monday, where we started out coming down, then bounced, and then bounced on Tuesday. The S&P continued to make new lows, whereas the VIX did not continue to make new highs. So that tells me that the uh, hedging kind of slowed down, which in turn makes me think we're going to have a nice bounce on Monday, but we'll see what happens. That's my, uh, that's my crystal ball projection, which works about 60% of the time every time. Uh, NASDAQ uh, did not push on new lows on Friday, so stayed actually slightly green on Friday. Russell made new lows, and the Dow, uh, very weak, made new lows. In fact, the Dow came down and came lower than its uh, than its May twenty fifth low. Um, so some some uh, some weakness in the the big thirty. Gold continued to explode. Uh, silver a little bit higher, but not nearly as bullish as gold. Actually, silver ended up a little bit red on the week. Uh, notes and bonds, uh, kind of choppy, slightly higher. The 10 year yield pushed above five, settled in at 4.837. Uh, oil finished lower, kind of choppy towards the end of the week. Natty gas had a big pop on Thursday and Friday. Uh, soybeans ended up higher wheat and corn, a little bit choppy to lower. Uh, the euro and the, uh, and the pound a little bit lower and Bitcoin big, uh, big move higher. Uh, all the way from, let's see, this was, well, this was Monday here. So starting off Monday, it was under 30,000 and pushed above 35,000 briefly before settling in around 34,000 for the week. So that's the uh, quick look at the markets. Let's jump into the trades. So uh, pretty decent, decent week overall with all my, all my trades. Let's look at the individual strategies, starting with zero DTE AM, my AM trades continue to struggle. So you can see here on the AM trades, I took three minus 11 over 11 K. Uh, Monday was a loser of 5,100. Uh, Wednesday was a loser of 8,100 and then a $1,300 winner on my Thursday AM ratio trade. Uh, DKS, the man, the myth, the machine, Dick K. Uh, the Dick K special three for three, fourteen hundred dollars, five hundred and fifteen hundred. So total of sometimes you got to refresh this. Uh, yeah, a little over thirty five hundred on my DKS trades for the week. The zero DTE ducks continue to struggle. Had one of those, excuse me, three of those. Uh, Friday was a sixty nine hundred dollar loser. Uh, Wednesday was a $1,200 loser and Monday was a $1,400 winner. So minus 6,700 on the ducks. I'm going to be doing some uh, planning for my November trade plan and it may be eliminating the ducks. They have just not been so great. Uh, no FOMC trades this week, but we will have a couple of next week as Jerome does take the stand on Wednesday. Uh, JSPs just had one of those for minus 2,100. And once again, old reliable power hour came through. Uh, so almost 26,000 on power hour for the, for the week, by the way, I'll do my month end recap, uh, after, after the end of October, but I was, uh, I mentioned this in our live stream on Friday for the month of October, just for power hour cracked the, uh, cracked the six figure mark. So um, over 111,000 for the month of October, uh, just for the power hour trades, which is pretty awesome. It blows my mind how, how great power hour continues to perform. Uh, but again, for the week, uh, almost 26,000. So Monday, 
Uh, tranche one and two were losers. Tranche three was a winner. On Tuesday, all three tranches were winners. On Wednesday, all three tranches were winners. On Thursday, all three were losers. And then Friday, all three were winners. Uh, I <laughs> Friday, I had a chance to have my biggest one-day power hour ever. Uh, and in the literally in the last two minutes, if if SPX would have closed below forty one fifteen, it would have given me my biggest power hour ever. But it pushed up, closed at like forty one seventeen. So took a little bit away in the last two minutes, but still uh, still a nice day. All right, so that's power hour. Next up is uh, PM ratios. So let me. These are kind of afternoon um, premium selling. So I had three of these, uh, one for minus 3,300, one for plus 4,800, one for plus 3,100. So positive week on the PMs. And then the quiet lunches, a little bit red on the week. So yeah, two, yeah, well, not a little bit, uh, quite a bit. So just two trades, minus 15,000 on those. And then lastly, for zero DTE, my buddy Rick, one loser, one winner, down for the week. Uh, the one on Tuesday was minus, minus 5,400, and then the one Friday plus 1,800, so down 3,500 on Rick for the week. So that's it for zero DTE. As far as dynamic butterflies, just did time flies. Three for three on the week. Uh, one for 1500, one for 200 and one for 1400, uh, no losses on time flies all month for the month, month of October. And then on dynamic calendars, dynamic calendars, I believe were just, were slightly red for the week down like 400 bucks. I believe, let me check all these, make sure we get them all. My list keeps growing. So I get, I get to do more clicks. Uh, yeah, minus 455 in the week. So had a 5.7 that was a winner, 3.6 that was a loser, a uh, single calendar in SPX that was a winner, a uh, 3.4 that was a loser, a 1.2 that was a winner, a 2.4 that was a loser. That one's open. Uh, a 1.3 that was a loser and a 1.2 that was a winner. The rest are open. So small red on, on uh, calendars. Iron Ducks didn't have any closing trades, just one open. Yeah, open one in SPX, so no closing trades there. And then on the option selling front. Let me refresh that, get the accurate. Yeah, plus 3,000. Although, I don't really count these as closed trades because either these are just rolled booked credits on MES and QQQ. These are still open. I did close out a VIX hedge trade for a little over 900. And then this VXX one, I did close half. So I booked 900, still have the rest open. So we'll see where that one shakes out. Need volatility contract to contract to benefit that one. And then lastly, had a good week in portfolio margin trades. I was hoping it was going to be even better. I'll talk about what I mean here. So <clears throat> with portfolio margin trades, make sure that's right. Booked a little over 34,000. So I had a really nice winner on a golden butterfly for almost 17,000, uh, 1100 on a, what we call a vertifly. Uh, this one, I booked 9,000. This is still open. I still have half of this open and assuming things don't go crazy over the weekend, uh, on Monday or Tuesday, I'll close the rest of this and I could book another who knows anywhere from nine to, well, we'll see what happens. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to book profits before they actually happen, but I booked 9,000 of it so far. Uh, this time fly, this was my first portfolio margin time fly loss, uh, since I started doing them. So minus 3000 on that one booked, uh, almost 2000 on this one, another time fly. And then this golden butterfly, this was frustrating. This is one where with prices coming down, I, I had to close. I had to close to reduce risk because if we gap down on Monday, this could have turned into a, you know, twenty thousand dollar plus loss. But if we end up bouncing Monday, which I think we're going to, uh, this could have ended up being a 
twenty over a twenty thousand dollar win. Uh, but I, I couldn't. I just didn't want to take that risk. So I ended up closing it out, taking a sixty two hundred dollar loss. Uh, sometimes you just you got to do that to manage risk. Uh, Humpty fourteen hundred, another Humpty for twenty two hundred, a call swoosh for plus thirty seven hundred, and another Humpty for plus seventy eight hundred. The rest are open. So nice, uh, nice week overall, uh, especially with portfolio margin and power hour. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if I had just traded portfolio margin and power hour, but obviously that's not how trading works. So got to include the rest as well. Uh, that's it for this week. Everybody have a good rest of your weekend and we'll be back at it on Monday. Take care.